Hi, my name is Yvonne and welcome to the RV Cooking Show, a place where I can share with you my passion for RVing and my love for recreating regional food specialties from all across the country right here in my Tango RV Kitchen. Today we're going to visit the Great Smoky Mountains National Park and I'm going to show you how to make a treat that could not be more southern, corn casserole. Here's what we need. We're going to use one egg. We're going to use one box of Jiffy corn muffin mix. We'll have one can of whole kernel corn. Don't drain it. We're going to use the juice. A can of creamed corn. One cup of sour cream. And I like to use the reduced fat sour cream. I just think it's a little bit better for you. And one stick of butter. But I have a hard time with a whole stick of butter. I'm delighted to tell you that I found this Smart Balance Butter. It's a 50% butter, 50% good for you oil mix. It's got omega-3s in it, no hydrogenated oils or trans fats, and it's got 28% less fat than butter. So I'm delighted to say that we can use something that's a little more healthy for us in our corn casserole. The way that we're going to make this is we're going to beat our egg in our bowl, we're going to add all of these other ingredients, and we're going to cook it in our electric skillet right here on our countertop. Let's turn on our electric skillet. We're going to heat that to about 300 degrees. So let's get started. One egg, broken into a large bowl, and we use our whip, and we'll whip it up. Once our egg is whipped well, we're just going to add all of the other ingredients. We're going to add our box of Jiffy Corn Muffin Mix right into the beaten egg. Our whole kernel corn with the juice. Don't drain it, you need that juice. One can of your creamed corn. Your half a cup of melted butter, or in our case, our Smart Balance. And our one cup of sour cream, reduced fat sour cream. Our next step is to mix everything together in the bowl, then we'll put it in our skillet and get it cooking. Our skillet is preheated to 300 degrees, so let's go ahead and put our corn casserole mixture in. And we'll put the top on it and then we'll visit the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. We're going to set our timer for about 30 minutes. It may take a little bit longer, it may not take quite as long depending on the heat of your electric skillet. We'll check it as it cooks. Once the sides are browned, we'll know that it's done. The Great Smoky Mountains National Park is a wonderful place to visit. In fact, it is an international biosphere reserve as well as a world heritage site. It's no wonder that the Great Smoky Mountains National Park is the most visited national park in our system. It's a great place to visit all year long. If you visit in the spring, you'll be rewarded with carpets of gorgeous, colorful wildflowers. In the summer, you can hike through the forest to beautiful waterfalls, and lots of them, and put your feet in the cool running water. It's really wonderful. The fall offers you a spectacular view of autumn colors, beginning in the higher elevations and lasting for weeks all the way down to the lower elevations. In the winter, it's quiet and peaceful. Very rarely do they get snow at the lower elevations, so you can enjoy yourself, and if you're so inclined, you can go into town and visit some of the beautiful Christmas lights. It's a wonderful place to visit. If fishing is your thing, there's lots of streams where you can catch brook trout, smallmouth bass, Fly fishing is where it's at in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. You do need a license though, and the Great Smoky Mountain National Park straddles both Tennessee and North Carolina, so a fishing license from either state works. You can buy your fishing license online, and I'll put the link up on my website at rvcookingshow.com just to make it a little easier for you. 
We mentioned lots of hikes and lots of waterfalls, but there's also lots of auto tours. And one that is not to be missed is the Cades Cove Tour. It's in a valley with lots of wildlife and beautiful historic buildings. You'll want to drive to Cades Cove and it is a one-way loop tour. If you'd like to bicycle the loop, you certainly can do that. Bring your own bicycles or rent some right there at Cades Cove. One of the auto tours that I think is sort of a hidden gem is the Roaring Fork Tour, and you actually access that outside of the park boundaries in Gatlinburg. It's a small, one-way, old-growth forest type of road, so don't bring your RV or a large vehicle, but certainly you can bring a pickup truck, and don't be fooled by the name Auto Tour. You can park along the way and hike and see waterfalls as well as historic log buildings it's really, really beautiful. You'll definitely want to go to the highest point in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. That's Clingman's Dome, which also happens to be the highest point in Tennessee. You can access Clingman's Dome by traveling on another fantastic road through the park, Newfound Gap Road. You'll park in the Clingman's Dome parking area and walk up a slight incline. There's lots of wildlife there, too. In fact, when I visited, a mama bear and a couple cubs ran in front of us across the path. Really, surprises around every corner. Go atop the observation tower and you will be rewarded with a wonderful 360-degree view of the Great Smoky Mountains. You can also hike along the Appalachian Trail, in fact, the highest point of the Appalachian Trail, right there from the Clingman Dome area. There's plenty of camping in the park, but like all national parks, it is dry camping. You're also permitted to bring your pets to the campground, your dog specifically on a six foot or shorter leash, to picnic areas and along the road, but you want to make sure you don't bring them on the hiking trails, they simply aren't permitted there. If you want to get a taste of the town outside of the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, you might visit Gatlinburg, which is a great little town with lots of festivals and events all year long. A little further up the road is Pigeon Forge, where you might visit Dollywood. And by the way, Dolly Parton is from this area. Just a little further north of Pigeon Forge is Sevierville. So who knows, you might even see Dolly Parton on your trip to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. It is certainly a place that you can visit again and again and again. Catch it in every season, and I think that you will agree the Great Smoky Mountains National Park is a hit. It's been about 30 minutes and I think our corn casserole is done. We've cooked it in our electric skillet on top of our counter at 300 degrees. So let's take a look and see what we think. Here's a trick when using your electric skillet, by the way. When you go to lift the lid, you want to lift it in the back so all of the hot steam escapes in the back. Okay, what we're looking for here is the sides to be fairly brown and pulled away from the skillet. We're going to give it a little shake, and in the center, it should be nice and firm, and it is. So I think our corn casserole is done. Well, here we have our corn casserole in all its splendor and glory. It smells delicious, and it looks delicious, too. Today, I'm serving this aside a rotisserie chicken. I'm also going to serve this with a nice green salad, and with this dish I like to serve a creamy dressing, something like a poppy seed or a ranch dressing. Now if you don't eat meat or you're looking for something a little bit different, this dish goes just great. Omit the chicken and serve it with a bean saute, and I'll show you how to make a bean saute in a future episode of the RV Cooking Show. If you want to add a little Mexican twist to this, you can take it a whole different direction. And when you're mixing the ingredients together, add in a can of green chilies. It's really good that way, too. Well, that'll do it for us today here on the RV Cooking Show. I'm so glad that you came to visit us. You can visit our website at rvcookingshow.com for a recipe for corn casserole, to learn a little bit more about the Great Smoky Mountains National Park, or any other recipe or destination that we've talked about in any of our RV cooking shows. Again, it's been a pleasure having you over. We'll see you again next time here on the RV Cooking Show. <music>